This time I'd like to show you how to move objects using the parametric tool. So let's say we have a cube and we activate the parametric tool by clicking on the first icon in its tool palette or by choosing the tool from the plugins menu. They can find it as well. So when you're somewhere outside of the object itself, you just hold down the left mouse button so you're using the free movement tool similar to what you get when you're using just the normal move tool from Cinema 4D. Uh, to use some quantization, you head over to the preferences of the parametric tool and you can see there's an option to move in specific increments. So let's say you like to use 20 centimeter moves. You can see that now the object moves in steps of 20 centimeters. So this is an option you can easily um, switch on and off for any kind of action. Uh, next is a more limited kind of movement along a specific axis. For this there is a, speci a special mode while holding down the shift key. Shift is also defined by the preferences as you can see in, in the parametric tool here. Use shift 4 as a menu and you can decide what kind of action you like to control by holding down shift. So you can have translations which is basically uh, just moving the object along a specific axis or you can have rotations or you can have both at the same time. Uh, for all of these actions it's relevant where you're placing the mouse cursor on the uh, bounding box. So the translation and rotation mode is the default mode. That means that you have to place the mouse cursor somewhere in the middle of one of the bounding box faces holding down shift and you can see that now you can move the object along this direction or axis. So this is limiting the movement. But you can also use the um, edges for rotations. That's why we have this kind of combination mode here for translation and rotation. So it depends uh, where you place your mouse cursor. When you're near the edges and the area is defined by this distance you can see at the edges of the bounding box cube. So when your mouse cursor is between this distance towards an edge, you're using the rotate mode and when you're more to the center of the face, you're using the movement mode. All this in combination with the shift key and left mouse button. So this is quite handy, especially with the parametric objects as you can now rotate them freely around any given edge. If you like to have a more precise amount of movement, you can have an action which is here on the front side of the tool settings with the parametric tools. And for this you have to do a selection. So you uh, uh, define the um, direction you like to have the movement in. And but for this, and every other kind of selection you do uh, on the object, you have to hold down control. And by doing a control click, you can see that we got now this um, colored side on the bounding box, which can be, of course, any other side as well, for selecting this kind of direction. And then you just choose the amount you like to move it and apply. And this is causing um, forward movement um, about the distance you have given here. Um, another mode doesn't require you to enter um, specific values or clicking on the apply button. Just by selecting the site and um, just by holding down the shift key you can see that we can now rotate the uh, object around the center point of this selected side. So this is also quite nice for doing this restricted rotation around a specific um, midpoint. 
which is similar to this rotate object here, where you can again specify a specific amount of rotation you like to have around this edge. So just let me center the object again. Um, the um, rotation and the movement can also be along a specific edge. So, so for this you can also select edges as you can see whenever you're close to an edge of an object uh, it get this yellow color for highlighting selected edges and again you can decide to rotate around that edge or you can decide to move in the direction of this given edge. So this is of course similar to selecting a face. So you can see if you have faces and edges selected at the same time, the face is always the preferred side. Um, what else do we have? We have um, of course also uh, scaling. So just let me center the cube. Oops, center the cube again. So scaling is uh, one of the fun parts, of course, with this tool, as you just have to grab the corner points or the faces or even the edges to scale any kind of object. So this is especially useful for dealing with the parametric objects as they normally scale around the center points. As you can see when we switch over to um, the four window display, uh, scaling happens always from the edge that is on the other side. So if I grab uh, one of the corner points which is on the right side, you can see that the left side stays in place. But you can also grab faces and pull them just similar to doing an extrusion. Or you can grab the edges to scale just two sides. You can see that the back side and the yes, left side uh, will just stick in place. So you can have the corners scaling on three sides, edges uh, scaling on two sides and the faces just scaling along one direction. Again this can also be of course restricted by using this kind of uh, quantizing. You can see we have scale steps here as well. And uh, we can also just enter any kind of size value. For this, again, you have to control click on one side or even one edge, uh, defining the direction of the scale. So let's say we want to scale this and you can see by clicking on the uh, specific side, we get the actual size in this field. So just by entering the new value and hitting apply, we can be sure that this is now just 200 centimeters in this direction. And the same is true for the edges. So you can enter any kind of length value here, hit apply, and then of course it scales from both sides, from back side and front side in this case. So these are the two different kind of methods for scaling objects. All of this can also be used, of course, in the other viewports, so you don't have to be here in the uh, perspective view. Just have to be uh, um, a little bit uh, careful about uh, what kind of area you're clicking in when you're here in the more restricted viewports. So you have to be close to an edge to define this side to be the direction of scale 
when you move to the middle you can see that nothing happens here because you cannot scale perpendicular to this kind of view so you have to be a little bit more to the edge side so in perspective view it's maybe more easy to really address all three dimensions of the object.